you know, there's a lot of people that don't understand the difference between preaching the gospel of the kingdom and being a minister of righteousness. And people seem to think that, you know, coming at your brother or your sister that may be in error has given you the charge to be the defender of Jesus. When the, the father that I serve, the architect of the universe, can take you out just like that. A lot of you don't understand that these people on the internet play a role in the equipping of the saints. And when I say that, that means the father will allow certain things, you know, especially, you know, things that are adversarial to his word and everything. Like he will, his permissive will to permit something will allow these things to happen so that he can build you and build your discernment by, right, this is like field training. Some of you are on the internet and you are bashing different people and everybody has a different perspective about this person, that person, and the other. And you don't understand that there is a, there's a verse in scripture where the Lord says that he will allow these things to see how much you love him. It, to see if you know his voice, to train you and to equip you. But so many of you want that glory, but you punks, you don't want to get dirty you don't want to go out in the battlefield you don't want to learn you want you like i said you want to take your brain out you want to keep it in the world when you understand how to go to work and how to raise your children you know when they're doing something bad you want to go to school but all of the stuff that common sense have that god gave you when when it comes to spiritual matters you all you got to do is spend time with god he gives you a blueprint you got like almost two thousand pages of a blueprint and, and, and you got all of these ministers of righteousness. They know the word. They know how to weaponize it and shoot everybody with it too. You know, but Father says that he's going to break your arrows as well. So you, you, you got to slow down and you, you got to you gotta pay attention. You know, I know the internet. Yeah, I got some great training. Great training from some of you. I called y'all all kinds of stuff. Y'all called me too. Daddy beat me. You know, when I say beat, I got skippity paps too. And you're supposed to learn, not repeat the same thing you, that, you know what does it say about insanity you, you, you know you, you, you're repeating the same thing and expecting a different result and you're building your platform on just rage and you mad at everybody you don't understand that the world is sick and we supposed to be father's glory in the earth to bring forth his medicine but you are literally pulling the plug on the IV yourself not going to be none of us left if we listen to y'all ministers of righteousness you cowards because you could never take what you dish out <sighs> and when you have so many people that's trying to take up the mantle as I'm going to be the you know the defender of grown people I, I think one of the most horrible experiences I had is when I had to tell grown people like that have grandchildren and and have really done stellar things in their careers and everything they got common sense and everything in every other area of their lives but they literally take their brain out hanging up on a hook and give it to someone else to you know and, and this is ridiculous and you got to understand father's you know instructions are not that difficult to understand they may just be a little bit difficult to keep there's a difference so I really want us to, to slow down and understand what the difference is. If someone can give me their understanding of what it means to preach the gospel and what it means to be a minister of righteousness, if you understood what those mean, I think a lot of you would take a different approach to how you handle people. A lot of times you have to understand that yes, Father wants us to bring correction but it's the way that you correct. And I think that's what Father has a problem with. It's the way that you rebuke. It's the way that you talk to people. It's the way that you handle his sheep. You know, there's a lot of people that's really sitting like and everything like that. And there's a lot of people that got so much to say. And I, I want to use this example, sound mind. I want to use this example. How everybody's got their mouth on Beyonce. But you got to understand, do you think that God loves her? Do you think God wants her to burn in hell and he don't love her or and, and you know anything like that? Do you really believe that? You know, do you realize the one person that handles her the right way 
the one person that could reach her heart. And I'm not saying something is wrong. All right. I in this season, I'm not putting my mouth on anyone. And the the, the real prophets are knowing we're gonna do what we were told to do. And if it and, and whatever God told you to do, I'm going to respect that. There's a lot of people on the internet that I don't really agree with what they're doing, but they said God told them to do it, and the proof is in the pudding. You'll know that by the fruit. I know what God told me. And he told me to handle people with love. Love does not condone. Love corrects gently. You bring it to their attention, but you do it in a manner that they can be restored and redeemed, not destroyed. And then you making everyone else feel like they're the bandwagon and the gathering. I'm not okay with that. You know, God bless you if you think that. Uh, I don't even want to say God bless you with that because it's so evil. Maybe I want to use the term good luck because uh, luck is something that has to do with, with fate and, and hoping that, you know, demons and devils aren't looking when you're trying to accomplish something i would like us to operate at all times in the favor of god in his loving kindness and tender mercies and his grace grace upon grace upon grace upon grace that's what we need in this season and um but i want you to understand this and i'm going to close out do you realize that with everyone that has something evil to say if you uh, uh, you know learn what it means to minister as opposed to destroy do you realize you can touch a person? I'm just using Beyonce as an example. You know how many millions across the world she has influence over? Do you realize the person that's going to touch her is going to be able to remind her of the God that, that birthed her, that brought her into this realm to, to, to do something greater than, than she could possibly ever imagine? The God that I serve is capable of doing that. Um, imagine how many people in one fell swoop can, can go on and be saved. Be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you minister. Everyone that has a mouth to speak shouldn't speak publicly and should not speak for everybody. I know if I was struggling to be in the world or to be in the body of Christ right now, I probably would choose the world because they're more receptive. If we have, you know, certain alternative lifestyles that will receive people in love, their community, like the Christian community, we're supposed to be a community too. We are not celebrating one another. You mean the devil knows how to celebrate and embrace somebody's sin and love them through that sin? And, and we can't when our master in chief, that's what he did for us. Like, and we're supposed to be the example. I'm not telling anybody what to do but I'm going to tell everybody what I think they shouldn't do. I think you shouldn't. Um, I think you shouldn't minister if, if you don't understand what preaching the gospel of the kingdom is. I, I think that if you if your message of someone being a, a mature pastor or immature pastor, do you realize, you know, that's venom by you assessing and judging who's mature and who's not? And then when someone says that about you, you're doing what you're accusing other people of. So remember when I said, if the Lord says everybody that's accusing everybody of being an immature pastor, I'm going to send this judgment out on them. There's going to be two, two lanes and the party you're talking about and you are going to get hit by that judgment because father, father said, don't do it. Don't do it first or second or third or in between. Don't do it. So if you don't know how to minister, this is going to be difficult for you. It's going to expose that maybe you're not operating in your lane. There's fruit of when you're operating in your lane. And every controversy is not, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting hit from the world. I'm getting persecuted from the world because, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for the Lord. You know, sometimes... I say this repeatedly. Sometimes it's not witchcraft. Sometimes it's not the world. Sometimes it's you. And sometimes you need to sit down and take a minute to understand you. And you need to bring that person to the Lord. Get delivered. Redeem. Find what God wants you to do. Because everybody that went to the Lord wanting to follow him, Jesus did not take them. The the, the man, the Gad, what is it, the, the Gadarene man, he wanted to go evangelize. And Jesus said, no, you're not walking with me. Go back and tell everybody else what it is that I did for you. Do you know that um, that is 
preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the testimony of Jesus Christ in your life can touch somebody else. The testimony of how Jesus Christ operated in your life. That's what we're supposed to be ministering. Jesus saved me. This is what I was doing. This is how Jesus came and got me out of my muck and mire. And now I'm telling everyone the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom. But then the mantle of the minister of righteousness, this is what they do. I got saved two weeks ago and I'm being funny. And now I'm going to come and tell you what to wear. I'm going to tell you what you should do. I'm going to tell you that you're wrong. I'm going to tell you what you should look like. I'm telling you how you should smell. I'm telling you what to, this is what my perspective of what the holiness works operates. This is what, because I got saved and, and I know better because I read a book, N not what Jesus did for you and how he saved you and how he saved you. You know, you can encourage someone to say, you know, I can trust Jesus because look at how he handled my brother and sister in the world. You know, look at how they changed their life around. Look, but that's not what people are seeing. What people are seeing is a bunch of vicious wolves and vipers. And if and, and anything that I do, this is this is ridiculous. Father says if you if you cause any one of these babes, you know, to go straight, to run away from, from him, that it's better for you to tie a mill, so it's better for you to commit suicide and go and get yourself thrust and tossed in the depths of the sea than for you to do this. So I'm 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 hope I'm helping someone. And this is what love does. You know, I'm not putting nobody name. I'm not destroying them. I'm showing you a spirit. And this is how you minister. If you want to come for somebody, come at the spirit. You don't destroy the person because that's what the devil wants us to do. Once we destroy the person, that spirit just jumps into the next person. And then now you turn your target at them. And now you're killing people. You're killing people. And the spirit is jumping around making fun of all of us. I got you. What prophets say, the devil said, aha, aha, I deceived you. So I hope I'm helping someone and I hope I'm blessing someone. If you have a spirit that likes to connect to the most vicious thing that someone could say about someone, you don't even understand maturity will sell you. You know what? Let's just say a child has a cold. That the child has a cold, the nose is running. They, they can see sickness in their eyes. Maybe their ears are bothering them. Maybe they're having trouble breathing. See, this is when you can use just discernment and understanding then. Why can't you do that with spiritual things? You don't have to see someone vomiting up green and, and having an exorcist moment where their head is spinning around to understand what the spirit is. See, some of you are preaching and, um, and, and, and destroying yourselves while you destroy others because while the person you're, you're God is more inclined to go after that person than you father said I will leave all of you to go get that one so I will leave all you ministers of righteousness to go get my Beyonce I will leave all of you right all of you right ministers of righteousness that pointed out everything that they did wrong damning them to hell saying that even that I can't I God on my I can't touch that I can't change that that's your level of faith and you're telling me that the, the child that I crafted and I made that I, I you realize God can say you know what I'm gonna get a prostitute folks say go get that prostitute you understand go get the look at some of the things that God has done to confound you ministers of righteousness He's he and, and he's and he's going to um, he, he's going to handle all of you. A lot of you think that you're going to heaven. You're not. You got a bandwagon. A lot of you are on the stage. Y'all ain't this and y'all ain't this and you ain't no Christian if you really did this and you ain't no Christian because this and that and you think that you chastising somebody and you got to understand that um, that you and them are going to the same place. You and the bandwagon because what are you doing? You're affecting audiences and you're influencing them to rage. Rage. You're, 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 you're influencing them after they speak to you to go and if it's on YouTube or social. After they speak to you, they go to someone else. Carry that bone. Look at what it said. Gossip. Look at the spirits. And then they go and they say something vicious and nasty to another child of God that might just be an error or might be having something with where they're afflicted with a demon too. And they need they need they need to be delivered. And they're not gonna get that from people like you. And if you think a pastor or a preacher or somebody else can't 
just because you're in the fivefold doesn't mean that you're the elect. There's a difference. The Bible talks about, you know, it, 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 the elect won't be fooled. If you read that scripture, it, it says that everybody will receive except for the elect. The elect, if it, it says, if it were possible, it's not possible. So you can be in the fivefold and not be in the elect. You can't, some of you are the remnant, but you know, there's scriptures that reveal that there's a remnant inside of the remnant. Some of you aren't one of us. And some of you have not matured in your life to know because you, you wrap your, your ministry around your mentality and your brokenness. And only somebody that been through something, you know, they can, they can minister that. There's a lot of people that leave the church and go to Satan because of how you've treated them, how you blackballed them. You know, when people hear from you, what spirit raises up and I, I I have rage against it. Uh, I have I have this. I'm backbiting. I'm carrying a bone. You know a thing by the fruit and you can't justify it. You can't find a scripture that will validate your one point where there's like 90 other scriptures that will totally prove that you're using that scripture as a weapon of war against our own team. You're using that, and then the other scriptures are not cross-referencing, uh, balancing you out, or being, or, or, or validating, you know, the totality of whatever it is that God is trying to relate to His people in love. If your message is not rooted in love, even towards the one that you may be raising the hoopla about, you're supposed to love all of them. And I want you on the other side of that to understand love does not mean condoning evil. If in the world we have to go to school and get licensing and get changed, do you realize that we will lose our license if we mishandle people? Even clients that we don't want, we still have to take them and do our best to lead them in a positive direction for the, their lives. Those of us that are licensed and, and studying, um, you know christian psychology or what or, or mental health or the, the whole point of it is to help people even the worst cases drug addicts people that are full of different demons and stuff if you don't know how to handle these people you can send them back into what's killing them um i really hope that this blesses someone and i really hope that you take what i'm saying to heart because other people are affected. And again, if you think God won't leave the bandwagon to go get that one that you are using as your topic of conversation and your topic of crucifixion, you are sadly mistaken. And I'm going to tell you this because I'm one of those people. I'm a black sheep that everybody banned against and God came and got me. So I'm testifying and evangelizing what Jesus Christ has done and this message is showing and should be the fruit that God has taught me how to minister with love.